I still see this as how I've been analyzing this for the past couple of weeks now. Iran's not operating from a position of strength. They're operating out of, out of a position of weakness. Mm -hmm. So now they're pushing, pushing, pushing to see how far they can push um, to see if we'll get some kind of overreaction, whether that's we react poorly and then strike something, you know, and escalate the situation militarily. Uh, or they're trying to force us to the to the negotiating table because sanctions are crippling them. Mm -hmm. um, the last move before this was they were very public, made a statement, and said that we've exceeded our enrichment, uh, you know, uh, uh, production for uh, uranium. Mm -hmm. And then they sat back and watched and waited. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. We didn't do anything. We didn't go crazy. And so they were like, "Well, crap. Basically, what do we do now?" So things escalated some more with the drone. They flew a drone nearby. What would we do? You know, well, we shot the drone down. Um, that was really cool, by the way. Uh, Marine Corps uh, um, radar blocking sent that. It was just really, really cool. Yeah, it wasn't. It, we didn't shoot it down. We made it crash, basically. Exactly. Which is pretty fascinating. Jammed it, took control of it, and took it down. <laughs> really crazy. Yeah. Um, but then, again, on, so on fr Friday evening, I believe, was these oil tankers. Now, what they're trying to do is, and I think it was a grossly miscalculated move by them, because the geopolitics of oil coming out of the Strait of Hermuz have changed. Now, if this would have happened in the 80s, where a vast majority of, of our allies and us got a lot of our oil from uh, uh, through the Strait of Hermuz, we might have reacted differently to this. But now we're just not compelled to to, to react if they do a, a, pull a move off like this because the situation has changed. The economics have changed. Where the oil is coming from has changed. A smaller percentage that go to NATO allies, I would say with, uh, with the exception of Japan, don't really get the majority of their oil from that area anymore. So it's changed. Mm -hmm. So they seize one of these ships. They don't seize one of our ships. They seize a, a weaker ally in, in this. Um, I'll be at the UK, but they seize a weaker ally mm -hmm. and they sit back and wait to happen. Now, the, now the, the, I think this was a complete and total lie uh, as far as, of course, how they said this whole thing went down. But they, the, the, the UK ship said that they were going through the exact channel they're supposed to go through. By the way, it's very hard to steer off that because everything's automated. Mm -hmm. They know exactly where they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. But they said all of a sudden the, their attack boat just you know, started surrounding them. The helicopters came in. The Iranians said that they were acting aggressively and strangely, and then they wouldn't cooperate with them, so they escorted them back to Bandar Abbas, which was total and complete just bull. Um, but then again, nothing will come from this. They're sitting back and waiting to see how we're going to react because they're doing everything they can to get us to the negotiating table. The president has to sit back and literally just check this out. You have to check your allies, make sure that everyone else doesn't respond with too much force. Just sit back and let things play out. This is, we are in a beautiful, beautiful position right here. We are exactly where we were just before the Obama administration let them, just ruined it, basically. They, the people, the Iranian people were in the streets. They were rioting. Uh, they were this close to pulling off a, a, a regime change on their own, on their own, and then we ruined it. And now look at the ramifications. We are exactly so, in that spot right so now. So are the people beginning, do you believe the people will begin to rise up again? And can they stand that? Because the crackdown will be quite hard. Um, yeah, it, it will be quite hard. And it all depends on if they can get um, their internal security force to switch over. Because that's what's keeping them in check right now. So we say that this is ridiculous that they have our CIA agents, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think the CIA is necessarily there. It might even, I mean, but I wouldn't be surprised if we had somebody there, uh, including special forces. Uh, I, I know people that happen to be on the ground in Poland and other places when the Berlin Wall fell, uh, and their job was to be able to stabilize things, uh, destabilize on the way out, and stabilize on the way in. Um, do you think that they have 17 of our agents? No, that's, that's ludicrous. A total, again, a complete and total lie. Uh, the thing is, and if you look at, they're more scared right now of internal problems. The external problems they're not really mad about, or they're not really too concerned about right now. Their external problems are being forced that the sanctions are putting on them. But the main focus right now is that force is hurting the people. So, like I said, we I think we were last week. I, th I think food staple prices were eighty uh, have gone up by eighty percent. Inflation is out of imagine that eighty percent. So, getting in milk, getting in you know chicken or eggs, all the, the prices it's have eighty percent. That higher. is insane. Yeah. 
um, water is running out. They're having water shortages. Now, you have certain people within their government, within their security services, even IRGC, members in the government, who are being approached by a lot of these street movements. And they're saying, hey, what are you going to do? What do, what do you do? You know, like, what, what can we do? How can you help us? And then you start seeing some of these people getting accused of espionage by the CIA, which is just ludicrous. They are taking out systematically one by one the people that might cause problems for them once this street movement really erupts. That's what's happening with them right now. So where does it lead? If we stay cool, where does it lead? So <laughs> there's, some good, there's some good scenarios and very bad scenarios on that. What I think, because geopolitically, a war does not make sense. They know this and we know this. That's why we're not going to do any kind of invasion, which is just stupid. We're not going to escalate it to a full-on war. If you see troops being moved, 500 troops to Saudi Arabia to support this, that's stupid. 500 troops in Saudi Arabia will do nothing but piss off a lot of jihadis that are already people like Al-Qaeda that are in Saudi Arabia. But that's not going to do anything for Iran. It's purely <laughs> symbolic. Moving a few F-35s into, uh, you know, into uh, wherever the, whatever air base they went to down there is insignificant. Again, it's not going to do anything. When you see five aircraft carriers start going towards that way, that's significant. But one aircraft carrier there, that's not. Everything is symbolic at this point. So they're not going to go to war. We're, we're, we're not going to do it. I, I see that either the sanctions will continue to put so much pressure that the people out in the streets will put pressure on the government to actually go back to the table and say, okay, how can we get back to the JCPOA? What are the things you want fixed in it? I can see them at least making that gesture and attempting to go back. Either that could happen, the street uh, movement boils over and forces regime change, or the IRGC, which answers only to the Ayatollah Khomeini, does something very crazy. And then everything geopolitically that makes sense goes out the window. <laughs> 